listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome to the Science of Magic, a place where science and magic come together to transform fact into evolving truth. We can be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring divine intervention. Illness and health are two of the most misunderstood concepts in modern-day culture. Allopathic medicine often views physical health as the absence of symptoms. When they appear, symptoms are treated as illness. Sometimes the symptoms are indeed an indication of an imbalance or illness. Other times they indicate healing in process. I recognize allopathic medicine is a viable and necessary form that saves lives. But when all symptoms are judged as bad and arrested with medication, we might be driving illness deeper into the body. The illness goes dormant or asymptomatic until the frequency where it resides is reactivated. In order to evolve as human beings, we must raise our frequency on all four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. As our frequency rises, pockets of illness can be reactivated. We become symptomatic as the body uses the increased frequency to take care of of old business. At that point, if we drug away the symptoms, we're actually aborting the healing process and suppressing frequency, driving the illness back into the body. Moving from one frequency to the next, whether up or down the health scale, requires entering into chaos. The energy matrix of one state must be broken down into its constituent parts before a new one can form. This process creates symptoms of imbalance. The practice of arresting all symptoms puts an energy ceiling on our evolutionary process, creating a gap between our physical being and our spiritual one. 
There's an ancient healing modality that brings the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual together. Not only does it treat on all four, four levels, it can reveal the imbalances or issues in each. One of the best representations of this modality was recorded in the New Testament. Jesus healed with a high frequency he channeled through his hands, a level of healing which is a form of divine intervention. It changes the status quo through an infusion of spiritual light. There's a resurgence of this form today. Many modalities, such as Reiki, therapeutic touch, and Qigong, channel light. In these methods, spiritual light is channeled through the practitioner to raise the frequency of the client, correcting imbalances on all four levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Jesus performed hands-on healing during the darker or lower frequency age of Pisces. These methods are now being empowered by the rise of ambient light or frequency we're encountering as the sun moves through a more highly charged portion of our galaxy. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do. When we consider the current increase in the availability of light, Jesus' words as quoted by John make much more sense. The fact that he could achieve such high frequency during the dark age of Pisces is amazing. The increase of ambient frequency now puts that same magic into our hands. There is a catch, however, isn't there always? In order to channel the increased frequency now available, the practitioner must move through their own healing crises. When greater light is channeled through the practitioner to the client, it shakes loose dis-ease and imbalance present on all four levels of the practitioner as well. The light can only be as clear as the window through which it shines. There's a frequency below which we can no longer maintain physical form. When we no longer have enough personal frequency to heal, allopathic medicine intervenes, keeping us alive. On one end of the spectrum, drugs support frequency. On the other, they retard it. It's much less like adding 85-degree water to a 75-degree bath. The temperature of the water can only raise to 85 degrees. If we wish to evolve, we must eventually refine our treatments in order to transcend the energy ceiling created by masking symptoms. Our guest this hour, Barbara Isavan, is the author of General Energy Touch, Beginner's Guide to Hands-On Healing. She's an inspirational author and speaker, gentle energy touch specialist, clinical and medical hypnotist, certified Reiki master teacher, certified Puranic healer, and life coach. Since 2007, Barbara's been a consultant at Four Seasons Hotel, Westlake Village, where she now holds the position of clinical hypnotist and energy healing specialist. Barbara also provides energy healing sessions, as well as clinical and medical hypnosis for individuals and groups. I will introduce Barbara, and together we'll explore the magic and the science of hands-on healing. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Prior innovative episodes can always be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. 
As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Star began to demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, Barbara E. Savan, is the author of Gentle Energy Touch, The Beginner's Guide to Hands-On Healing. Her website, www.barbarasavan.com. That's B-A-R-B-A-R-A-S-A-V-I-N.com. Barbara, thank you so much for joining us on the Science of Magic. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, when and how did you first notice that the energy that runs through your hands? Well, you know, my grandma was a healer, and growing up in, I, I was born and raised in Coney Island in Brooklyn, and my grandma would always do energy healing on my sister and I. And she would sit us down and, and, and uh, call in divine and God's energy for us. And we would feel like a tingling, a heat, you know, a certain sensation. And we always thought Grandma had magical powers. But the thing is then I had realized over a period of time that I was able to do the same thing and um, began to, to do some healing on some of my friends. Now, mind you, this is back in the 40s and 50s when, you know, we were told do not tell anyone about this because then they would think we were a little crazy and, you know, it was just bad timing at that point. So we, I, I sort of kept it a secret for many, many years. But I did healings on some of my friends. And then um, my grandma would constantly do this for my sister and I. And then, unfortunately, when she passed away when I was 18, uh, I got away from it. And then as I began, began aging and, you know, having children, uh, I started getting sick and the reason was I was not fulfilling my purpose and my passion and then realized I needed to get back to doing the healing on myself because I was diagnosed with very bad migraines, chronic fatigue, and the um, the thing that really made me understand about getting back to the healing was the fact that I was uh, um, 
diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and the doctor said I would be crippled just like my mom, and that did not feel, it did not sit right with me. And so then I um, started getting back to the entity that my grandma had introduced me to as a child. Where, do you, where did she learn it? Did you, did you ever find out? Well, she was from Istanbul, and ah. I think she probably, you know, back then they didn't have people teaching them. They, they just intuitively knew what to do. And I know with her, when she did healing on my sister and I, she would just intuitively clear us. And we would, we would never sick. And we would beg her many times not to do healing so that we can get sick to stay home from school. But unfortunately, that never happened. <laughs> and she'd constantly do healing. So I really feel that probably her mom would, you know, had that ability and maybe her mother's mother. So, you know, um, again, uh, it, again, I, I really feel it was just, they just knew what to do, and they just did it. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I, I use the hands-on healing with my children, and they, amazing immune systems, really strong constitutions, very little illness um, as they grew up. And you know what I've found that I think you kind of pointed out here is that if you start working with these kind of frequencies young, if you stop, it's like it doesn't go well. Why do you think that is? Because we're not fulfilling our purpose and our passion. And, and I know once, the only reason why I got away you know, from it was uh, my grandma had passed away two weeks before my graduation, my high school graduation. And it was somewhat, you could say, my way of punishing God for taking her at the age of 64, but now I truly understand it was her time to go. So uh, what happens is when we know we have the ability to help ourselves heal and we don't do it, that's when a lot of the challenges um, set into the to the physical, no, well, not just the physical body, actually it begins at the spiritual and then at the emotional, the mental, and the last to actually suffer is the physical body. So, you know, we do have the ability to help ourselves heal on so many levels. So am I hearing you say that you think that illness begins kind of in the uh, etheric realm or the quantum level and then filters down through the other levels of our being? I really feel that in my heart because, I, again, once I got away from it and started becoming ill. Now, mind you, I was never ill the whole first 18 years of my life, I had nothing wrong with me. But then once I let go of the energy that my grandma taught me, that's when my illness began. And I had realized that a lot of it were, you could say, issues in my tissues <laughs> that were making me ill because I couldn't understand the fact that, you know, she had passed away. I I was very angry. I was angry. I was sad. I was, um, there was so many different type of emotions that was filled inside of me that I weren't able to actually let go of. But then once I understood as I, you know, begin, began getting older that I needed to let go of the fact that, yeah, she did pass away and that's, that's just the way life is. So, you know, yes, I, I am saying spiritually uh, we begin to break down because our belief in, I, I would say God's healing uh, begins to uh, disappear from us. And then, of course, our mental issues, emotional issues, all affect the physical body. Yeah, they do, don't they? They kind of impact, and then when things don't move, they break down around the immobility. Um, would, you, would you mind defining hands-on healing for us? Well, it, you know, it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, it, it's actually what I do. It's it's a, it's a hands-on method that helps just to create a feeling of inner peace, and it shows you how to, you know, help yourself heal. And the most important thing is to be able to love ourselves for who we are and be grateful for everything that we have around us. Um, it works in so many different ways for us. You know, it helps us physically. Uh, by that I mean it helps loosen, block the energy that eventually can contribute to disease. It also uh, loosens, block 
um, you know, it helps us get to the root cause of our illness. Uh, Hands-on healing helps us relieve pain and headaches and backaches and all sorts of, uh, you know, just different type of uh, illnesses. And, and also mentally, what it does when we do healing on ourselves, it actually helps calm and relax the mind. And it also, many a times, creates that, that true inner harmony and awareness within us. And for, for an emotional situation, it actually helps us to release those fears that we have inside of us and helps us let go of, again, those issues that we are holding on that does make us ill. And then spiritually, um, I would have to say it, it truly gives us a, a deeper connection with our higher self. It also helps us increase our intuition and, and all the other abilities that we do have, but unfortunately, um, we tend to get away from because of all the outside interference that uh, weighs us down. So by uh, introducing a much higher frequency light, we're raising the frequency of the entire facility and thereby facilitating healing and enlightenment. Is that what you're looking at? Yes. yes. Nice. You would know, would you mind describing what a gentle touch energy. energy specialist is? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That's okay. I said, would you mind describing to us what, what, what you mean by a gentle touch energy specialist? What does that entail? I, I just, just do energy healing on clients. That's the name that the California Health and Longevity Institute uh, gave to me, Gentle Energy Touch Specialist. And so I, I've been using that name for the past 10 years. But what it is is just I do call in for divine God's energy for myself or, you know, for the client, and then just do hands-on healing. And it's amazing the results that I see on a daily basis. People that they Do decide you? to let okay. go of those issues from many, many years ago, and then they see their illness begin to subside or, or even disappear. Do you, um, are you able to do this long distance? Or do you yes, have to be in, in, in the presence of your client? No, I do not have to be in the presence of my client. I, I have clients from all over the world, and it, it's as if they're right with me. What I do is, again, I call in the energy for them, and their energy I can feel right in front of me, and I pretend that I put them on my table as if I'm you know in my office, and then I just do healing on them the same way. And then they many a times, uh, you know, afterwards we'll have a conversation or sometimes because of the, the time difference they'll, they'll email me and they, they tell me it's as if I was right there in the room with them. So the energy can go anywhere at any time. That's really amazing, isn't it, that we can do this um, at a distance. It's not restricted to time or space, really, is it? It's, it's not restricted whatsoever. Yeah. So how many forms of hands-on healing are there out there that you know of? Well, I I had taken Reiki. So, you know, I am a Reiki master teacher. I did do a pranic healing, which is more of a clearing of the energy centers. And I've taken a healing touch and therapeutic touch. And I would say basically they are all pretty much the, uh, the same. You know, God's healing, divine healing is healing no matter what we call it. And so you, you really believe that this is anchored in the divine, yes? Yes. So we're just without the channels any for religion, it? You know, associ- I use the word God without any religion associated with it. Right. Yes, I understand. Okay. So what effect does tapping into healing energy have on you personally? And we have about half a minute for that question. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it, I get to give you a situation that happened to me two weeks ago that I have now been able to heal and we can talk about it you know when we come back from commercial that sounds perfect so um when we come back from commercial we're going to talk about what effect tapping into healing energy has on the practitioner
Um, we will return to our discussion, which is getting pretty interesting here. After this short break, you're listening to The Science of Magic, and I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Do you want to hear more? Previous broadcasts of innovative episodes can always be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. Barbara and I will be back on the flip side of this short break. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Thomas Jefferson was a Burgess of 27 when he met Martha Whale Skelton, a 22-year-old widowed heiress who was fondly called Patty by her family. They were married on January the 1st, 1772, and they took up residence in a cabin on the building site on top of a Virginia mountain that Thomas had named Monticello. As Thomas and Patty slowly built their first version of the great house at Monticello, the Revolutionary War was heating up. Patty, with difficulty, bore five children, but only two girls survived. Thomas's political career developed to the point where he was often away from home, but after he authored and signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia, he resolved never again to leave his wife. He was elected the governor of Virginia, just as that state became the revolution's last battleground. The Revolutionary War ended in 1781, and Thomas gladly retired altogether to my family, my farm, and my books. But Patty continued to want to bear her treasured husband a son, and late in the summer of 1782, she died of kidney failure at the age of 33, four months after having borne yet another girl. Thomas was so devastated by her death that he never remarried, he mourned her for the rest of his life, even as he helped to frame the peace in France and then became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and the third President of the United States. This story is true. Thomas Jefferson was such an obsessive letter writer and record keeper that we know where he was and what he was doing nearly every day of his adult life. Every significant thing he says in My Thomas comes from his contemporary writings. My Thomas by Roberta Grimes is now available at Barnes & Noble, Costco, Target, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, Kmart, Walmart, Sam's Club, Walgreens, CVS, and online at Amazon.com. You can visit Roberta Grimes online at www.robertagrimes.com. <laughs> The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common 
They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State Certified Occupational School, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Annie Callahan, dedicated to negotiating a position for Earth within the Dagaronian Coalition, had trained for three years to become an Earth ambassador. Yet, the very eve of her arrival at the capital ruling planet, she is claimed as destined mate to an oversized, mating maddened vamp who swears he will never release her. Lord Astaran, king of the Macian sector, has waited over 900 years for his destined mate, Having found her as an alpha vamp, he is unable to relinquish Annie, virtually holding her hostage until he can claim her. Yet Macians cannot survive without their mate's love. How could he strip her of her citizenship, her ambassadorship, and her freedom and expect to win her heart? With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is the latest book in this exciting series, The Daggeronian Chronicles, guaranteed to keep readers coming back for more. With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is available on Amazon.com and KahiraO'Donnell.com. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. Visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. 
Our guest this hour, Barbara E. Savan, is the author of Gentle Energy Touch, The Beginner's Guide to Hands-On Healing. Her website is www.barbarasavan.com. Barbara, just before the break, we were just about to get in something really interesting, and that's what what's the effect that uh, moving this energy through the practitioner to the client have on the practitioner? It, it helps us heal on all levels. What it does, it actually, when we call an energy for ourselves or for another, it raises our vibration, and it helps clear whatever challenges that we have that we, we're willing to let go of within our body. So not only does the client get healing, but the practitioner also gets healing. It, is there a form of physical detoxing or personal processing that's resulted from channeling the higher frequency? Yes. Many a times, because we are doing healing on the seven major energy centers, which are called the chakras, each chakra is a very integrate uh, database, you could say. It, it holds memories from this lifetime of, or, I'm sure, very many past lifetimes. And so what happens is the positive energy that we do call in moves through each of the energy centers, releasing things that do no longer serve a purpose. And many a times it's like a little bit of a roller coaster ride, you could say, because uh, sometimes we feel absolutely wonderful when we do, you know, healing on ourselves. Other times, you know, it, it actually, we do not feel as good. And the reason is what it does, because it's now releasing the heavy and negative energy, the lower vibration from us, uh, when we're now faced with situations that we have choices here, we either to let go of things that do not serve us purpose or to stay in the energy that does make us ill. So um, this really leads into my next question is, when you're working for someone, uh, are you working with your intent or their intent? It's, it's always their intention. You know, and my so intention is to call in the energy for them. But when I uh, have a client, I always mention to them that I would like them to set an intention for the healing, for themselves, to themselves. So whatever they feel they need heal is what they ask for. However, the healing is very, very intelligent. So it knows exactly where to go, and it actually knows what to heal. But it's good when someone sets an intention because it makes them more aware of what they need to let go of. So... How about the difference between conscious and unconscious intent? So it's like, I think a lot of us are really divided against ourselves, and we might have what yes. we think is what we intend to do, like whether it's, you know, heal an illness or lose weight or all that. But there might be some underlying holdouts. Have you run into that? That's many a time. How do you, how you, do you know, work with let, that? So many times we say we want to think positive, but our unconscious and subconscious mind may not feel that way because over the years we've actually beat ourselves up. So, you know, whether they know what they need to release or not, that energy knows what to release. And then, you know, I can have a client set one intention and then over the course of doing the healing on them, something else completely that they may not, they may have forgotten comes up to now be released. So is it kind of a process they go through over time, or does it happen right at the session? It, it happens at the session, but many a times it's, it's like anything else. Healing, it's like being on a, um, a carousel. You know, we go around and around and around. It stops. We get off, and we say, oh, okay, this is good. You know, I've let go of some of my challenges, and then all of a sudden we're right back on on that carousel going around again because there are so many challenges that we need to let go of during the course of our lifetime. So it kind of a spiral effect. Yes, and, and it's important for what, when we do healing, whether on ourselves or on others, to be patient and to love ourselves for who we are because so many times we're always beating ourselves up. 
And so in order to truly help ourselves heal, again, we have to let go of those choices that we may have made in the past that may not have been good and, and, and show forgiveness and acceptance and, and move forward, you know, in the now so that we're able to let go of that disease, you could say, that we're holding on to. So it sounds like what you're talking about here is guilt, that we're, we're holding on to guilt and judging, our, judging against ourselves, creating illness. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, without a doubt. Now, I was, you know, angry and guilty. Well, I, well, I mentioned about, you say about feeling guilty. A few weeks before my grandma actually passed away, I had a dream that I saw her die. And I dreamt about her entire funeral. And, of course, when I woke up, I said, all right, this was a really bad dream. But then two weeks later, she actually passed away. And I had dreamt that my mom buried her in her, in, in her wedding gown. And lo and behold, when her funeral was, my mother buried my grandma in her wedding gown. So I felt guilty that I thought I killed my grandma all those years. Because, you know, I had that ability, I guess, you know, to see more into the future. Right. And so the guilt, the anger, the, the just hating myself, you know, for, for thinking that I, I killed her, when of course I didn't. It was the time to go. And so, you know, I held on to that. And then what happened is I then developed very bad uh, rheumatoid, you know, arthritis. And once I was able to understand later on in years, that this illness was because of the not me forgiving myself and the guilt and the anger and the frustration. Once I began to letting it go, I completely healed myself from the arthritis. Now, however, sometimes, you know, the illness, uh, you know, our journey is the illness. So many a times uh, we, we need to see what it is that we need to let go of to help heal that illness from us, but not always do we heal from the illness. The illness may show us what it is that over the course of the years that we weren't able to let go of, and so it, it'll show itself to us so that we can understand why this is happening to us. So from your story, it, it's, it's the, the story is deepening like stories do. It seems like you weren't really mad at God. You were mad at you, and then your anger at yourself dropped your frequency so you could no longer connect. Is that correct? Exactly. But I was angry at God also because I felt he took her from me when my life with my grandma was just beginning. So I was angry at her for leaving me. I was angry at God for taking her, and I was angry at me for thinking I killed her because I had that dream. You know, so I was, kids take it, was it on, levels. too, don't they? When, you know, p people, young children, I've worked with a lot of them that are precognitive, and just because you can see it doesn't mean you're responsible for it. But can you speak to that a little bit? Exactly. I was not responsible for my grandma dying. It was her time to go. And then what happened, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story here. Um, a few weeks after she passed away, uh, we lived in the project, projects in Coney Island, and my mom had gone to her brother's house. And all of a sudden I heard, Babacita, Babacita. Now, my grandma used to call me Babacita. And as I got up from my chair, I was walking towards the foyer that we had. There was this incredible light, and it was um, all white. And the closer I got to the light, it was my grandma. And I, she kept on calling me Babacita, Babacita. And as I got closer to her, she said, Babacita, don't be so angry. And then, of course, I, you know, at the age of 18, I got afraid and immediately called my mom to tell her that grandma was in the house. And I saw her spirit and that she spoke to me. But my mother said to me with my imagination because I was grieving her so. So we can see spirit you know i when she told me don't be so angry it was it was hard for me not to be angry but it was her telling me you need to let this go so that you can go on with your healing but of course i did not listen and then over the years i began to suffer 
Well, this is an amazing story. Um, We'll be right back. On the flip side, we have to take a break. Um, You're listening to The Science of Magic, the place where altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric create common ground for the betterment of our world. You can always listen to previous broadcasts on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soul. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love From Out of the Woodwork by William S. Peckham. Sean Kennedy, a Toronto contractor, buys derelict houses, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, a century house in ruins, and starts the renovation... The house fights back. He is visited by ghosts of owners past. His visions are triggered by touching an oak mantle, reading a faded letter, opening an old locket, or opening a brand new casket in the basement. These visions will take you on a trip across southern Ontario from Niagara Falls to Toronto to Kingston. From Out of the Woodwork is now available in paperback and on your favorite electronic reader. To order your copy of From Out of the Woodwork, go to www.williamspeckham.com. That's www.williamspeckham.com. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. Our website is www.thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Glilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Barbara E. Savan, the author of Gentle Energy Touch, The Beginner's Guide to Hands-On Healing. You can find her on our website, www.barbarasavan.com. Barbara, before we get too much further into this last segment, would you mind telling our listeners where they can find your book? Oh, they can find the book on Amazon. They just go to Amazon and... and, uh uh, put in gentle energy touch and it automatically comes up. It, I'm also in, in quite many Barnes and Noble and the uh, book is worldwide and actually in about a year it'll be um, published in Czechoslovakian. Oh, <laughs> that's a translation <laughs> for you. <laughs> yes, I know. 
I'm happy it's not me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad? Huh? Yes. <laughs> so, so Barbara, how do you think that your grandmother's visitation related to your ability to uh, to channel energy? Do you think that they were related at all, or if it was a different, a separate uh, gift that you had? I think it was related. I I, I really feel that all the years that she was, you know, did was with me. She did teach us how to do energy healing, and uh, because the vibration of our bodies were raised, you know, uh, and, and a higher vibration, uh, I had the ability, and actually my sister also, my sister is very psychic and intuitive. I, I become very psychic and intuitive when, when I actually do healing on someone, whereas she can, she's just psychic on a, a, a daily basis. But... Um, because of uh, my grandma constantly doing healing on us for 18 years, raised the vibration and, and definitely helped me in all areas of my life. In other words, because your frequency was higher, you were uh, had more perception on the spiritual realm, and that's why you think you were able to pick up her visitation. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, and, and, and even now, many a times, I, I hear my, my father and my mom and... I, when I do, you know, sessions with my clients, I have the ability to see their, you know, uh, either uh, spirit guides or angels or whoever comes in, you know, a visitation uh, to help them do the healing. And so it, the increased frequency increases your ability to function as a medium, is that correct? Yes. Nice. Do you see hands-on healing as a replacement for allopathic medicine? You know, we have the ability to be able to do anything that we did set our minds to do, and I really feel that with energy healing, it gives us an opportunity to let go of the challenges that we do have. Many times we need regular medical attention, and of course we need, you know, uh, some antibiotics or whatever the case may be. You know, I, I'm very holistic, and so... Um, I use supplements, I do my healing every day, and I, I keep myself healthy, you know, and make sure I, I eat well and, and exercise. So, right. Um, so how, is how can it going you tell to, if hands-on uh, healing is going to be the best you know, course I'm of action that for your client or if they need the a doctor? How do you tell when it's a good time to, to refer them? That they need to take their own healing, you know, in their hands. And, and not necessarily go run to the doctor. Now, I'll, I'll give you an example. Two and a half weeks ago, I had fallen, and I, I fell on my right shoulder, and I actually tore the bicep from the joint, and I have three, two rotary tears. And immediately, you know, of course, the MRI was really bad, and the doctor there said, you, you definitely need surgery. Of course, the word surgery doesn't really, you know, it didn't feel right for me. And so I went for functional therapy and soft tissue therapy and, of course, doing my own healing. I began visualizing my my arm rising and and healing because I I kept on uh, sending light, you know, God's love and light to it. And it it was also my, my, the arm that I do healing was my right arm. And it's now two and a half weeks. And I am able to completely move my arm in all directions. Don't get me wrong, I still have pain. But I can, with my mind, be able to handle the pain. And I do not need surgery. That's wonderful so news. We because, can you know, help ourselves. All of- all of us don't have the ability to uh, channel this higher frequency that, that you do, that you were trained in early on. Does your book help with that? Does it give people methods to use this on themselves? It, it, it's very simple. And the thing is, we do all have the ability to be able to channel, you know, energy healing. Uh, we just have to... Um, do it for ourselves. And what happens is over over time, there's so much negativity that is around us that it actually um, gets us away from our natural ability to help ourselves heal. And getting back to your question, yes, the book is very simple because healing is actually very simple. It, it doesn't 
take a rocket scientist to call in, you know, divine light and then do healing on yourself. So I do give them step-by-step uh, illustration. There's many, many pictures in the book to show them this is how you can help yourself heal and get rid of those challenges that you've been holding on to. So it's a very detailed, simple book. And anyone can do this. It's So it's kind of like our birthright. <laughs> yes, it is our birthright. Yeah. So do you, have, do you give advice or do you have advice for our listeners of what they can expect to have their issues come up and how to move through them when it happens? Well, what happens is, you know, it's a very uncomfortable feeling when all of a sudden you, you know, um, you, you say, you know, dealt with an issue from family. And so it's important for you to understand that when you do healing on yourself and these issues do come up, Look at them not as being a victim of them. Look at them as sending, now you're going to send them love and light and healing. And it's time to let go of those things that do not serve its purpose. And so in the book, it talks about the energy centers. It, it talks about, you know, certain uh, areas that you, where you're holding on to and, and how to help yourself release it. So how how do you suggest you release it? Again, like for myself and for many of my clients, I, 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 it's so important that we accept ourselves for who we are and to send love to ourselves and healing and life. And to understand things happen to us for a reason. And it's important for us not to stay victim in that because if we stay victim in whatever the circumstances are, we then lose the ability to move forward in life and to help ourselves heal. So loving ourselves is, as, you know, and opening your heart and forgiving yourself and accepting things that may have happened in the past uh, is so important for us to help us heal. So it all goes back to love, gratitude, yes. acceptance, and prayer. Yes. <laughs> prayer is Beautiful. so important. I One of my favorite prayers that I, I, I give to all my clients is the light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, and the presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is always with me. So it encompasses everything. And it's so important that you know and you trust and you truly feel that that we are protected. That's a beautiful prayer and a beautiful way to close, Barbara. We are out of time. But thank you so, so much for being with us on The Science of Magic. This has been The Science of Magic. Remember, you can always listen to past thought-provoking episodes on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge, comforted with love, and live in the light. <laughs>